Um, so yeah, uh, the album is influenced a lot by that. Definitely a lot. Wu Tang, you know, big influence for the al the album as a whole. I've, it's music as a whole for me, really. Um, their beats, their um, the chord progressions they use has been imprinted in my brain from a life of listening to them. Um, I uh, you know, it's got a lot of different stuff on it. Uh, no, not one song sounds like it really matches up with another song on this album. So I really tied it in with the electronic elements, you know. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's very weird how it came about because it's all my musical. It's kind of like my dad's album. It's, it's kind of like my dad's album. It's <laughs> it's a lot of different genres on one album, you know, tied in by this one thing in which on my dad's album that consistency was his writing and this his his guitar playing. It was very unique. It, it was a lot like Hendrix. It was very influenced by him, you know, but he still had this own dirty, grimy style that just so, I don't even know what to call it, man. And, you know, if you listen to my dad's record, this didn't happen on purpose. I didn't grow up listening to my dad's record. I started, I was self-conscious. I didn't really tell people about it when I was younger because I yeah. didn't want them to, you know, I, I did, and eventually it happened. Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Riley Cameron here. Uh, your band is Midnight Daydream? Yeah. And you've got a, yeah. a, got a self-titled album coming out in July, I believe I read. Yeah, July 5th. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's been a long time in the making, man. It's, it's, uh, I've been working on this for a while. I've had a lot of stuff going on in life and it's just been delayed and delayed and but but I've been getting better and better so I've been like you know it's it's worked out. Well we we're talking a little bit before we started you know I'm I'm not much into hip hop and that kind of thing but there are bands that come around like Linkin Park I, I like them and uh, I mean Riley's not a copycat by any means but it's got that same vibe but um I want to get to know you and um if you don't mind let's talk a bit a bit about your father um he's a guitar player yeah um passed away a few years ago um and say so you feel free whatever you want to talk about as far as your father goes and, you know, and and we'll go from there but uh before we talk about anything else tell us a little bit more about you man uh I uh I grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina, or well, Rocky Point, like right outside of it to be specific. And I, uh, I don't know, man, it was a crazy life. I, I got into music at a pretty early age. I um I, I, the interest started at about eight years old, but then, man, I had like the coolest mom ever. So, as basically me, me as a as a musician, that had nothing to do with my dad actually absolutely really? nothing to do with no nope not a bit it's it's really funny how that happened uh i remember him playing music i liked it when he played music but my my personal interest in it nothing to do with it i just had a a really cool mom and she um i, I was a skateboarder and there was this band called asg that i always heard at the skate park uh and um my my son's uh cousin second cousin third cousin actually owns it now it's really crazy how that happened won't get into that but um he ended up uh he always plays band asg and stuff uh i got obsessed with them found out who they were and then i went to go i started you know being hyper obsessive like i am i uh researching and stuff and i found out that they're actually lived like a few miles down the road from me and they're oh, from wow. like yeah, they're from Wilmington, and uh, <laughs> I was just like, and they were already greatness in my head by then, you know, it was like, it was on, you know, it was like, it was like a Slayer fan in the 80s, like, I was like, I was in, I was in it, I was about it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so uh, my mom ended up just, you know, I was about 11, 12, and she just ended up 
dropping me off at these uh nightclubs in Wilmington until about two in the morning and trusting the band she she went in there met the bands met me introduced started introducing me to the people I wanted to meet you know you know she's an adult wow. I was a timid little kid yeah yeah and every weekend man for I'm talking about for like five years every weekend that's where I was it's going to see this band or seeing other shows it got me into music and you know it, it, it very at the very beginning of that happened is my brother had guitars in the house and stuff shout out to my brother Robbie and uh he um he he uh you know he let me play his guitars and taught me what he knew and I learned and uh I just got obsessed with it <laughs> you know it never really stopped <laughs> you know when I was in high school all the skaters listened to punk music it was uh Dead Kennedys and that kind of thing and now I, I i hear him listening to like the uh lincoln park kind of stuff uh, mm -hmm. so. which that's strange to me because they it, it was punk music for me too that's that's the cool thing about asg man they few they're still together they're still in wilmington still doing their thing man sort of a lot of big bands like motorhead and stuff they they've played hellfest in france i mean these guys they, they're, they're on relapse records and uh they, they do really well uh, you know, still friends of mine. Uh, I don't get to see them as much as I would. I would want to, you know, if I was home. But uh, they uh, you know, they fuse that whole Southern California punk thing, you know, with like, like, like regular rock and roll, you know, like your your average dirty Rolling Stones, you know, like that the you know just that vibe, you know, real like like to the core rock, and uh, it was just so it's still so unique what they do. You know, it's a uh, more psychedelic now, which I, that's, that's a huge, I'm a huge wow. fan of stuff like that. Yeah, see, I always loved classic rock. You know, I was the Beatles, the who Rolling Stones. I mean, anything that rocked back in the sixties and seventies, that was my thing. And then when I got in high school, then that's when you start seeing more of the metal stuff going around. And so, yeah, I was ahead back in high school. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man, I'm, I'm sure the scene was so much better back then because the, the culture is being taken out of music in general, like not even just rock music, but it's, it's more materialistic. Um, uh, it's easier to make, um, you know, you know, so it's people pumping out more of it and it's just so, it's just more the there's no the, the culture is just being yanked out of it there's no camaraderie there's no um it's just it's just a it's just a business it's okay to be a business we have to have it a business but it's becoming just a business you know and um i'm sure back then it was not like i know back then it wasn't like that you know because it wasn't like that when i was first getting into the music scene and uh, when i was a teenager it was you know it's just i miss that a lot you know That's i remember heaven I remember bands always like fought against the system and they, you know, they were against all the, the machine, you know, and now yeah, the corporate part of it, you know, yeah. instead of rage against the machine, it's raging for the machine. Nowadays. <laughs> 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 what hey, is there's dead presidents, man. People love them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, that ain't no lie. The green speaks a lot, doesn't it? She... Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. if you don't mind, let's talk a little bit about your dad. I mean, he was a great guitar player and, uh, you know, left this world too early. But, um, yeah. What do you, what do you remember about that, your dad? I remember well, actually. Um, I, I, I do. I have like, like, I've like purposely held on to certain memories, you know. Um, I think about him a lot. So, uh, he he was, he was, a very unique character. I do remember, like he was eccentric, man. He was different. He was he was just like, he didn't care about nothing, man. Like in a good way. <laughs> he just, um, I don't know. He he uh, from what I understand, he was a really. I remember him being a good person, but I was very young. But uh. Uh, we we always usually remember our parents as good people or uh, but even knowing more of his business and growing up in uh, the small town that I did we everybody knew him it seemed uh, I, I, I he's a really good guy man uh he he would buy people cars and you know just help a lot of underprivileged privileged families and 
he he did a he did a lot for a lot of people. Uh, I know that for a fact, and I, I don't hear I never re- heard any bad things about him. You know, I I never have. Like, uh, he, he um he he was just genuine, genuine. He played with yeah, some really good dad. He played with some big name folks, didn't he? Yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that, some of the some of the bands? Yeah, uh, uh, it, it's actually it goes even further than that, apparently. Um, but he did that album, Midnight Daydream, which is you know I eventually I was against it for most of my teenage years, and I didn't want to like live under a shadow. But man, that's a cool name, man. That's an awesome name. <laughs> it's it's a really cool name and uh and, and i just i was scared of what people thought so you know uh i that's where my name came the name comes from i i, I stopped caring what people think in my town because i'm not even there anymore so and even when i was there i didn't care um but he uh he made he made that album midnight daydream and he uh jack bruce from cream um aunt b billy james my publicist great he's been so patient with me through for a very long time yeah he's an awesome guy he's he's a great person he really is um and uh let's see michael bruce and neil smith from alice cooper group were on it gosh the list goes on it's a mitch mitchell from the Jimi hendrix experience buddy miles and billy cox from the band of gypsies which is Jimi hendrix's other band the one he played at woodstock with i believe yeah yeah and um uh Gosh, there's some more, man. Ken Hensley from Uriah Heep. He did some keys on that album. Um, Harvey Dalton Arnold from the Outlaws. I don't know how I just forgot him. He's he's legend, you know, in the Southern rock world. Uh, Harvey's a great person. He's cool. He taught my dad some of his first licks on guitar, actually. Oh wow. Uh, there was, there was, yeah, there was some history there from uh for a vi- for a very long time before. Uh, my dad got in before that album, you know, and he they recorded that together. He they actually did my favorite track on that album together. Mitch Mitchell played drums on it. Uh, Harvey did bass and sang, and my dad did the guitars. It was uh called Miles Away. Um, yeah, I'm actually uh I'm actually uh planning on uh putting a cover of that on my record. So, really? Yeah, yeah. I had to. I have to put a cover from my dad's album on there. It just okay. doesn't make sense not to. To me, I always play them live. You know. Yeah. Well, he when you got somebody like your dad who a lot of people admired, you know, and, and put out great music. Of course, you want to you want to put some of that on your own album. I mean, it's not you're not stealing it, you're not copying it, you're paying tribute to it. Oh yeah. Yeah, well well for a while I I never put any covers out like that and uh I never put in there anything else, especially legally like that, because I was afraid I was going to get sued by my family. Oh, but <laughs> yeah. but we're past that now. <laughs> I've I've gotten older. We're past that now. <laughs> you don't want another Dweezil Zappa kind of thing going on. <laughs> no, no, no. See, my dad. I'm a lot like my dad. Uh, I am the black. I definitely the black sheep of the Cameron side of my family. They're all they're 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 great people the ones that i know you know but there were ones that were around and are around that have you know just never fully accepted me you know i mean and i kind of don't blame them for such a prestigious family like just given from birth like i mean my mom was a dancer an exotic dancer and my dad was this rock and roll guy you know so you know, it, it kind of didn't work for them. I don't blame them, but, but times have changed. You know, uh, when my when my dad did pass away, back to him, uh, uh, that did cut me from that side. Like, you know, it kind of broke the bridge to that side of the family. I'm yeah. so glad. I'm <laughs> so glad. Really? Like, for like nothing against them, but I turned out, man, I've had a hard life, but I've still turned out exactly how i need to be to help other people well you take your experiences and and you turn that around to help others and that's what i'm trying to do 
I mean, good Lord, I spent most of my life an alcoholic and a drug addict and I advocate against it. You know, uh, my family means more to me than alcohol and drugs, but back then I didn't care. And now I really care, especially, you know, I got grandkids. I don't want to, I don't want them seeing drunk grandpa, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, it's, it's important. Cause you know, to, to the, to our, you know, we're an example to people, mm-hmm. you know, even if we don't realize it, I, I had, to, I had to make the same call. You know, uh, you know, I, I was, I did a lot of drugs, got in a lot of legal trouble, drank a lot. I mean, that was, I drank more alcohol than I did water. You know, it was oh, just, okay. that was a normal, like, it was just all day, every day. That's what I did. I just drank beer, you know, and when I wanted to party, I broke the liquor out and then things got really bad, you know? Um, yeah. So I get it. I did a lot of destroying my life with it. And my father did too. And that is, he took something very great and he, I remember him looking different. I don't remember the dad you see on the album cover. That's not what my dad looked like, really. He he uh, he looked a lot different than that. Like the dad you see on the album cover is like super skinny, unhealthy. His hair wasn't blonde. He bleached it with Tylex. Oh my gosh! You. <laughs> <laughs> He was crazy, man. <laughs> he was like, that's one thing everybody always said. was like the best guy, but he's nuts. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was out of it, man. Because uh, I think that, I think um, my dad was humble, but I think that when you start working with some of the most legendary people in the rock and roll, not only industry at the time, but history of rock and roll, oh, yeah. um, as humble as you can be on the outside, you develop an internal ego. And I don't think my dad liked that. I think my dad didn't like, like, I think that my dad genuinely just wanted to make a record with his peers. They, I think my dad considered himself an equal to those people in the 80s. I really do, you know, because greatness is something, greatness, it, it's something, it's an I. everything starts as an idea, including greatness. And you can tell that he had that idea in his head well before he recorded that album. You know, um, he, uh, I, I remember walking to a music store when I was 19 years old, and it was uh, Finkelstein's historic place in Wilmington, and my dad actually shopped there. You know, his whole life, and I walked in that place, man. And now my one of my, I'd say in my top six, five, six favorite bands is Judas Priest. Always has been since I was a little kid and I walked in there and I saw these pictures of my dad with all the members. It was, it, it was with Ripper Owens though. Not when uh, Robert Halford was with him yeah. and, and still love him. Um, and, and, uh, it just blew my mind, man. It made me realize like, like even if that picture wasn't taken after he did something like what he did with that album, like people aren't going to see it. Like people don't see it like that. Like, like he's, he was an equal then, you know? You know, whenever I'm around my peers that I respect and I've been listening to for years, I also feel like an equal. And that's why I feel like I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, I tell you what, I listened to some of the tracks and I was very impressed. And if if I'm going to like it, then that that means something. <laughs> it means a lot. To me. That's that's no, my it, ego. <laughs> no, it, no, no. Hey, man, uh, that year is something that's to be that's trained you know and you you spend enough time to listen to music and you have a passion for it no nah, nah, that's not ego man you you developed uh, you worked for that you de- you spent time man to develop that that ear for catchy good music your self credit you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've never been one much into pop music i was more of you know like i said i the the Beatles was probably the most pop that I was really into, but I I, I thought the Stones were better. I thought the Who was better. And... I was more of the Stones and the Who fan too. I love the Stones, is they are they just have this dark, creepy yeah. thing going. I'm I'm into that stuff, you know. Like like it's I just like the the minor scales the. It, the, I don't know. I've just always identified more with the darker stuff. <laughs> I mean, the, so the who, stones always. The who were so 
precise and technical with their instruments. I don't think anybody rivaled them. You know, there was some that was close. I mean, you know, Eric Clapton was giving credit. I mean, Eric Clapton's a hell of a guitar player, but I don't know. I think Pete Townsend was better. I agree. I completely agree. Pete Townsend, if it wasn't for the Who, Punk wouldn't have existed. I'll put right. it that way. You know, um, he, he revolutionized an entire multiple genres i mean pop me he revolutionized pop music i mean they revolutionized rock and roll they wrote they, they they just you know who doesn't who 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 couldn't hear that i, I mean i definitely i wasn't around but i definitely you know no definitely know that at that time for what was going on if you heard the who you knew that that was different especially mm-hmm. they, they were putting samples in rock music like mm-hmm. nobody did that at the time you know, like that's that's just that was that's just mind blowing, and and still to this day, you listen to the way Keith Moon plays drums. Oh God, I mean, that guy, it, it, and he didn't look like he was putting that much effort into it. It's like he wasn't even he there, was. <laughs> but his hands are doing everything perfect. You know, <laughs> you know, I truly believe that some people can just tap into this thing in their brain, and they're just able to put their bodies on autopilot, like. And they can just, you know, imagine how great these people would be without the drugs. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the drugs, the alcohol. Cause that, yeah. Cause it's not that stuff that's doing it. You know, that yeah. might be what gets you over your anxiety to do it. But you, if you can find a pathway around that, all the BS that keeps you from being where, you know, where, what you can be, man, it's just a shame seeing it. It's a, it, it, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, that it's, uh, it's still even to this day, part of that culture, you know, it's still cool to do that to young people, for young people, you know, and a lot of people, you know, I'm still pretty young, but even people my age that are getting to the point where, you know, once you get your late twenties, early thirties, you know, you should probably start thinking about how the deficient just you know it usually happens that way and in the culture of rock music it's like i don't know people look at it as to prolong your adolescence and i don't believe that's a good thing because then you die early you have health problems you know you 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 miss you you're filling your time with partying instead of spending time with your kids you know yep. stuff like that it's just it's sad that it's part of a culture that you that it's still portrayed I mean, people don't understand what, what, that music is the strongest thing in the world that influences young people, and the young people are the future of our world. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I think about Kiss. Okay, Gene Simmons, he didn't party, he didn't drink, he didn't do drugs, but that wasn't something that their publicists and other folks put out there because. They wanted to to appeal to the the party people. Uh, I I had JJ French from Twisted Sister on the show, and he outright told me he says we we didn't party, but our manager didn't want it, that getting out because that's what everybody was doing. And yeah, that, yeah. You want to market yourself to fit the demographic. I, I said, you know, if if you had come out and said. Twisted Sister doesn't drink and do drugs. Maybe that would have changed my mind at the time. I mean, it's possible. I think you would at yeah. least change some people's minds. Yeah, no, no, you're exactly right. I mean, if man, if I can think, I'm not, I'm not going to go into examples, actually. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, I can think of some artists that probably single-handedly helped me destroy my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll say uh <laughs> bands like motley Crue and those were the guys that i was trying to emulate back then and yeah that had a lot to do with my self-destruction and it, you know first it was just to fit in and it was kind of it, it was fun and then all of a sudden it got to be a habit and then it was a full-blown addiction. 
And yep. I mean, I was 36 years old, mind you, when I had my heart attack. That's how bad I drank. So, uh, yeah, it was time to give it up. And, I mean, God, do you yeah, think I'm of not... you think of a band like Led Zeppelin? How long would have they kept going if John Bonham hadn't have died, you know, on his own vomit because he was drunk? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, your body doesn't go in. It doesn't wake up when you're choking. You know, it it doesn't go in your your survival mode. You know, whenever you're drinking, absolutely not. It's sad. Um, same with Hendrix, man. Yeah, you know? what would he have done? I mean, he was already a revolutionary all by himself. So what no else telling, would he have man. done? What if he was still There's making no music today? God, and he 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 or he he he, he by by a, a laws of nature he could be you know theoretically, mm -hmm. you know yeah because so uh, it's a shame. My I mean, dad too, you know, you know my dad uh he didn't. You know, my dad shot himself, but I still directly attribute that to drugs. Uh, uh, I, my dad's like me. See, when I do drugs, I don't stop. And I get, I already have enough mental illness as it is. When I do put substances in my body, I, when I crash, I crash. I, I mean, I'll, I usually end up in jail or the mental hospital because I, and it's due to mental illness. I mean, freaking out, you know, and it just, it gets my, my dad, I know he was this, my mom, from what my mom always told me, because, you know, they used together and so they partied together. And she always said she was the same way, you know. Um, I think that's what happened with him. Yeah. I think that he just got way too, you know, just all that caught up to him, the album, the pressure. He, he, he spent his life trying to get the approval from his father. I know that for a fact. And he thought that that was going to do it. And it should have, but it didn't. My, my 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 grandfather was not an easy man to impress. You had to do what he he wanted you to do to impress him, no matter what type of achievement you made. You know, he was just that type of guy. You know, World War Two vet and stuff like that. So. Jeez. Yeah, yeah so I, my my dad he overdosed, and uh, he had a lot of mental problems, but he's also epileptic, and he on a good day he only had one seizure. And that was a good day. Oh, and those wow. were far and few between. But he, that mental illness kind of runs through the family. So my, my grandmother, she got to where she would see things that wasn't there. And she was, she had that paranoia about her where, you know, she thought the neighbors were talking about her and spying on <laughs> her. And, you know, I'd, I'd come over and she, she lived in an apartment and she had put cardboard over all the vents, air conditioning vents. And I'm like, grandma, you're not getting any air in here. And she goes, no, my, my neighbors upstairs are watching me through the, the vents. I'm like grandma, they, they can't do that. You know, she, uh, she had two purses. One, my aunt, great aunt had given her, she had, one purse that she would had for a long time, and she would take that to go pick up her her uh, social security checks. And then when she'd go like shopping with my my great aunt, she would take the new purse, and she'd swear somebody stole her money. When they finally put her into a home, they picked up her purse that she you know took to go get her checks. She had thousands of dollars in there. What? Yeah. And, you know, my, my dad, he, he got angry all the time. He didn't want to spend time with me or my brother. He didn't come to one of my football games or my soccer games. Didn't even show up for my yeah, graduation. That, that does. A, oh my God, man. I'm so, I could imagine how that impacted you and, you know, would make you want to like, you know, just not not send you down the path that would necessarily be the, to your best benefit. You know, I could see how that would affect you in a way that would just cause. You know, I know how that stuff feels, man. That's why, like, I used to say, like, like, like I dropped out of school to play music, and like, 
I wanted to graduate, but I felt like nobody else really cared, like, except for my mom, but I, I really still didn't feel like she cared, honestly, <laughs> like, in a way, you know, she pushed me to do it, but, like, it was, like, I was, like, why well, do this, like, I'm, like, you know, because I didn't feel like, any, you know, it, the lack of, um, what word would you use, the lack of, uh, support, uh, does a lot to kids that people don't realize, you know? It's a, it's a shame. It's I'm sorry you had to go through that, man. Hey, you know what? It's actually shaped me to be the person that I am now. I maybe I pay too much attention to my my kids and grandkids now, but I, you know, life is short and it goes by so fast. I think of my oldest grandson who will be a teenager this year. It's like, where did the time go? When I met my second wife, he was four years old, and now he's 12 going on 13. What, where'd the time go? And the only time I ever spent with my dad was when I would work for him during the summer. He had air conditioning business, and, and you know, I'd, I would get dropped off at a house and to put in duct work and stuff like that, and he'd be off working on another job so yeah even so then no quality time there was no quality time and when my my little brother he turned 18 my mom split she's like i've had enough i guess she was just waiting for us to be old enough and a couple of years after my mom left i guess my dad couldn't take it anymore and so he just decided to end it all and i i, I just i hate seeing people go through struggles when there are people out there that care even when you're looking for the care of those closest to you there's still someone out there that cares and you should care enough about yourself not to do something like that because the rest of us carry that pain for the rest of our lives i agree man i agree i i uh I lost, uh, I have a friend, I call him my brother, because I don't, he lived uh, beside me my whole life, his name's Adam, Adam Corbett, man, uh, I lost him three years ago, but I don't have a memory, uh, really, before him, um, I, I spent my entire life with him as if he was, you know, me, my brother, a blood brother, and, uh, him were best friends are, since I was three years old, you know, and, uh, you know, he died of an overdose three years ago. And he was the one out of us that didn't do any drugs. He was the sensible. He went into the Navy. He he. It was so bizarre, man. Like it was just weird. I uh, I came back home. I had to go do a little bit of time in jail because I did something stupid. Um, and then uh, I came back to handle it, you know. And um, uh, before that, he was fine. And I I, I sat in there for a year. Got, got back out. It was like man, like it was heartbreaking. And two weeks later, he passed away. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, man, I, I lost somebody. I've lost a lot of people pretty close to me from overdoses, but by him, I mean, it, it was just as if I lost a blood brother, you know, I mean, that's, it's a man, you know, uh, and then, you know, uh, I've lived a pretty crazy life, you know, and, and I, I have, I've spent a lot of time in prison and jail and that, that's mainly why it's, it's taken me to 29 years old to release my first album. You know, and uh, it's all due to like mental illness and drugs and everything. Really, uh, I tr you know, the, the cause of the actions that I took, you know, so now that that's cleared up, my life is completely different. I don't, I don't make the decisions I used to anymore. Um, but when I was going through that, when you go through stuff like that, people turn their back on you. You know what I mean? Your family, mm. your friends, they look at you like garbage and you're sitting in this cold block nobody to call nobody helping you out make money but you know so you can have money to make phone calls and uh he never judged me never just there for me man like so yeah uh yeah it's uh it's hard i don't like drugs <laughs> they, yeah uh, i'm yeah. with you i'm with you yeah losing him was harder than losing my mom mm. like yeah that's a lot of loss, man. Um, my my little brother, right after my dad passed away, my little brother swore to me he'd never do anything like that. 
And three years later, he hung himself right behind my grandparents' house. And I didn't give myself the chance to mourn. I just went to hitting the bottle even harder. I started doing coke a lot more often. And so I suppressed all those feelings. And here it is, what, 23 years later? And I still find myself crying over it. You don't. Yeah. You, yeah. You bottle, those emotions don't go anywhere. They stay in there. You yeah. know, when you put a bandaid over them, they don't heal, you know? Nope. Um, That's right. Yeah. I, I had to all, everything I was dealing with flooded back to me too. Whenever I stopped using everything, I um just kind of, you know, it just becomes reality. Life becomes real. There's there's no uh, instant fix for the moment to pacify you anymore, you know. Um, yeah, that, it's a uh, it's crazy how it works. You never know what's going through somebody's mind, you know. And that, that's it's it's made me realize to always be kind and genuine to people because you never know what they're going through, mm -hmm. you know. It's uh, it's you know, it's just just gotta be humble. And uh, respectful towards others, because you never you you could be the cause of somebody relapsing one day. You know, you could have a bad day, treat somebody like garbage. You know, say say the wrong thing. You know, I feel like I've done that to certain people before. You know, and uh, reality, the situation is just. You know, a lot of people say you can't stop somebody from doing something, and that, to a certain extent, that's fact. But I do believe that you can change their mind. Yeah. Well, you have to be an example. I think exactly. when someone looks up to you and they see, oh, well, he's cleaned up his act. Maybe that's what I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'll give you a quick example. I, I basically hung out with bikers when I was in my teen years. A lot of my friends, mm -hmm. their parents were bikers and Anyway, I had, after I had got married, I'd got a job doing pest control and I went to go do an inspection, termite inspection on this guy's house. Well, this is a biker dude, right? He's got some nice bikes in the garage, you know, and I, the long hair got tattoos all over him. So I'm like, oh, this is my kind of people. So I go strike yeah. up a conversation with him and we got to talking and he was working on a trike he had taken an old Volkswagen beetle and converted it into a trike right that sucker would fly mm. oh my god yeah but, I can imagine you know I'm I'm talking to him about the bikes about the tattoos and all that and in the middle of the conversation he just stops and he says hey man would you uh would you like to go to church with me and it kind of floored me you know and it made me think if this guy can go to church, maybe I could go to church. And I said, well, man, I'd love to, but my wife and I, we don't have a car right now, so I, I can't go. And he goes, I'll come pick you up. Okay. Well, son, sure enough, Sunday morning, he showed up to my house and took us to church. And that was the start of me really starting to change my life around. Now, unfortunately, I, I I had a falling out with someone at the church, and I left, and I got bitter, and my, my first wife left me for another man and got bad into the, everything again. And, well, I mean, you know, heart attack, the whole nine yards. But 10 years after all that stuff happened, I met my second wife, and she's – helped me to get back on my spiritual path again. But I think what would my life been if I had never gone to church? You know, and now yeah. I, I reference back to it and I want to have a cleaner life. You know, the big man talks about those seeds being planted, you know, yeah. <laughs> you don't always know when they're going to grow. And it's just like, there's certain fruits that will grow few seasons and then all of a sudden they die and then a couple of years later they come back 
that's kind of the way yeah. I feel. Exactly. You know, um, you, you and, and I don't think we, I think we, uh, as addicts, you know, it's, we, we have, we, we typically all have like a certain self-esteem issue, whether it's our looks or like yeah. the way we are or our past haunting mm-hmm. us constantly, you know, and, uh, having something, you know, having something or somebody to come in and help you realize your potential, whether that be a good woman or a good friend or God, or, you know, whatever that may be, whatever positive thing that is. I, th- I think that's really awesome, you know, and an important thing to uh be open-minded to if you're struggling, you know, that if you can do something about it, if you, yeah. if it's not coming to you, go find it, you know, even if it's hard to get up out of bed, go find it. Cause it only takes, if it's a woman that only takes a split second and then your life can change. If that's what's meant to change your life, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's just, you just meet somebody. If it's your career, it's like, if it's something that if, if you're depressed because you want to make music and there's, and, and you're a great musician and you can't, you, you, you just want to do it and you're depressed because you're not living the life that you believe you're capable of and that you want to, you can do something about it. You can go to music conventions. You can start going to shows and bugging people, bugging other musicians who care. Screw your social anxiety. Go talk to these people. Just go say, Hey, that was great. You know, and that could change your life, you know? Oh yeah. It's a, so I'll, I'm a firm believer in, you know, push through it and take action, you know, uh get out if you want a woman go out meet a woman you know go to church meet a woman you know whatever (laughs) (laughs) i think a lot of my self-destruction and you're right about the self-esteem i mean i was molested when i was a little kid and i I don't know i guess i felt like i wasn't worth it and uh, it, it it took me almost totally losing my kids to really change my mind about things and now I'm, i have no desire to to get drunk or high i even think of, about how terrible i would feel being on a bender like i don't want to mm-hmm. feel that way i already have enough aches and pains i don't need any more right <laughs> yeah man yeah there's those hangovers can get bad especially if you're drinking liquor no, that's God. once I got liquor, that's when the real problems like always started, you know. Well, like with my health, everything, you know, with decisions, oh, yeah. anything. Yeah. You know, we were talking about Billy James uh, a few moments ago, and uh, I I met Billy. Um, I, I actually emailed him to ask him to be on my show. I saw him on a Frank Zappa documentary and I, I wanted to get him on my show. And he told me what he did and, and you know, who he represented, but he, he wrote me an email about a couple of weeks ago. And he says, uh, he wanted to tell me about this kid, Riley. <laughs> and he made sure that I got a couple of your tracks and, he said that uh, he really wanted you to come on my show, and I trust his judgment. And from what I understand, you you took responsibility for your life, and you decided you were going to get things right. And you know you're doing this music, and I, I want to say that I'm very impressed with you. And and uh, I know we just met, but I'm proud of you. And I want you to thank you stay on that straight and narrow. And we've we've kind of brought the mood down, I think, for the audience. But um, <laughs> I, I want to know a little bit more about your album before the show ends. So let's get into yeah, that. Yeah, um, for sure, I'd love to talk about it. That's that's I guess yeah yeah um yeah whatever you want to know uh well whatever leading question you know because I I I'm really proud of this. I'm really. It didn't go at all how I wanted to, like not at all. There was supposed to be some bigger artists on it and everything. That's for uh, now. I have to save that for the next album. But, um, uh, it's uh, it's cool, man. I uh, it's it's been recorded uh vocally. Um, it's been it's being recorded uh mostly in the same place. But as far as the instrumentals, I mean, some of those things 
uh, I, I rode on a train, you know, uh, some of the, some of it, I was in my brother's garage in hundred degree weather in North Carolina, recording guitar tracks, overheating my computer and interface. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting how it came about just cause there was, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time tr thinking that I needed somebody else to complete it. I've never been a singer, just a guitar player, you know, but I got sick of people. I enjoyed the vocals, so. Dude, that means the world, man. That does. <laughs> um, I, I, until recently, I've been super self-conscious about the vocals. Um, I just, it's never been something I could grasp. And um, I was very afraid to attempt it because I'm not somebody who likes to fail. And uh, I, was, I understand. More, yeah. And uh, I just had to learn, man. I had to spend some time learning and writing. I had to learn, you know, the, the, um, the theory behind being a wordsmith, you know, that was something that was a big challenge. And, you know, that's, that's where a lot of my hip hop influence comes from is, you know, those, it's not, it's not a, there's, I understand why rock fans don't like hip hop, mostly, especially rock fans that didn't grow up on it. Mm -hmm. Um, My generation grew up on everything, you know, but because it's not meant to be enjoyed as the same appreciation for the music theory. It's more of cadences and word rhyming and punchlines, stuff like that, you know? And uh, I get a lot of my lyricism from hip hop because it, uh, it, I really appreciate that part of the art form, the poetic part of the, of the art form, you know? Um, it, 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 uh, it doesn't have as much hip hop influence as I want because I'm not really a rapper and I don't want to be. Yeah. But I uh, I really enjoy making beats. I'll consider myself a producer. I mean, I have hundreds of hip hop beats that I just don't know what to do with. You know, I've been working on over the years. Um, that a lot of cool guitar stuff in it. I mean, Eminem. I Eminem to me is uh he was a big influence. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's what started the rap. Eminem, Wu Tang Clan. I mean, I got a Wu Tang Clan shirt on right now, man. I love those guys. Those guys are rock stars, man. Those guys are freaking rock stars. I mean, they're 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 what they did to the industry. I mean, it's insane. They 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 flipped the industry upside down. They're they're geniuses. And uh, you know, and I I see hip hop as all the genres put into one. You know, it has the attitude of rock and roll. The, the the classiness of jazz and the delivery of of a spoken poetic you know art form the you know spoken word art form it's just it's a blend because they didn't have much to work with it's a bunch, bunch of guys from the ghetto who are sadly put in that situation um so yeah uh, the album is influenced a lot by that definitely a lot wu-tang you know big influence for the, al the album as a whole I, music as a whole for me really um their beats their um the chord progressions they use has been imprinted in my brain from a life of listening to them. Um, I, uh, you know, it's got a lot of different stuff on it. Uh, uh, no, not one song sounds like it really matches up with another song on this album. So I really tied it in with the electronic elements, you know, um, yeah. it's, uh, it's very weird how it came about. Cause it's all my musical. It's kind of like my dad's album. It's kind of like my dad's album. It's <laughs> it's a lot of different genres on one album, you know, tied in by this one thing in which on my dad's album, that consistency was his writing and this, his, his guitar playing. It was very unique. It, it was a lot like Hendrix. It was very influenced by him, you know, but he still had this own dirty, grimy style that just so... I don't even know what to call it, man. And, you know, if you listen to my dad's record, this didn't happen on purpose. I didn't grow up listening to my dad's record. I started, I was self-conscious. I didn't really tell people about it when I was younger because I yeah. didn't want them to, you know, I, I did. And eventually it happened. It, ha it happened. People lumped me in with the Cameron family and my father. And that's why I get all these shows in Wilmington. It wasn't, <laughs> it was just because I was like that driven you know, to walk around and pester these venues until they book me a show. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd fill it up, you know, I'd walk around with flyers and I'd fill it up. Um, so yeah, it, um, yes, this whole album is just, uh, it's very, it, if you listen to my album and listen to my dad's album, you'll hear a lot of the same licks, a lot of the same 
I play guitar like him, and a lot of his old old school buddies, you know, always told me that too, which is just, just kind of like I don't know, it just goes to show genes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's, the talent apple didn't fall far from the tree, huh? Yeah, yeah. People like to say he just kind of pissed me out, you know. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> but, you know, if you think about it, some of the best bands that lasted the longest were bands that could change their music, but still, you knew it was them. I mean, the the Beatles did it, the Who did it, Rolling Stones did. It. I mean, how many Rolling Stones records you hear like a rocking tune, and then something sound like it could have been on a country album? Um, yeah. And, Led Zeppelin. I, I don't think there was two Led Zeppelin albums that sounded alike. You know, um, very true. So very true. When you're able to do something like that, I, I, that's a talent, man. And I think that's going to prove longevity. So uh, yeah, and you know, I, you. when I first turned it on, I think the first song I heard. I, I heard the uh, the techno stuff going on, and I was like, okay, uh, I wasn't expecting that from Billy. And then I hear this really rocking guitar and, you know, a good beat, and it, it wasn't that usual hip-hop sound that I hear, you know, my, my kids play. I was like, wow, this is... Um, without sounding like Lincoln Park, it's got that kind of feel to it. So I for me to like it, it you know, I'm not, I, I don't want to sound egotistical, but you know, you should take that as a a compliment. I do. I do too. A, a very big compliment, especially just considering, you know, we come from different generations of music. And, it, it, you know, uh, if somebody from your generation of music likes what I'm doing, because what I'm doing has a lot of new in, new age influences, mm-hmm. um, it's like I'm, I'm really putting the future and the past together on this one. You know, <laughs> and uh, it's really weird <laughs> that, it, that it's working. So, you know, because I want my audience. I, that's what I want. I don't want to just have a bunch of young kids at my shows. I want everybody to be able to appreciate this. You know, I want this music. I don't want to look weird making some young like i want to be able to make this music when i'm 45 and not look like i'm trying to live in the past you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. well um if you if you watch some of the the clips of rolling stones concerts during the 80s you had a mixture of the young generation my generation with the older generation enjoying it you know, same thing happened when i went to go see the who I'm like, wow, there's little kids out here. And when yeah. I got to go see Judas Priest, I'm seeing, you know, there are a lot of people around my age out there is going, is it 10 o'clock yet? It's time for bed. <laughs> yeah. But there was a it's, lot of kids. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's some music is just timeless, you know? You, you know, uh, it's it just, I want that. I want to do that, you know? I, uh, you know, it's funny. One more thing. Uh, you know, I had to handle some stuff. I'm out here in Colorado. I went to I went to see Wu Tang Clan, and uh, September. Always wanted to go see this group. I mean, I'm talking about like it's like it's one of those. You know, yeah. probably if I could say if I could choose any last group to ever see, it'd be them. And uh, I remember I was like, man, you know, I don't know if I'm about to go get locked up for the next four years. I mean, I'm dealing with legal stuff like like this is the last of it, thank God. But I was dealing with legal stuff all over the country from stuff seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Wow. You know? So I'm I'm cleaning my life up having to go deal with all this stuff. But <laughs> you're the, facing it. I, Instead of running away, to, you're facing it. I have to for myself, my future, my, mine and my dad's legacy, for my son, most importantly for my brother so I can do something with my life to make him be able to do something better. He wasn't part of the Cameron family. He didn't get like, he didn't get the opportunities that I got, you know, I got to, it's up to me, man, for my kid, for everybody. I have to clean my life up and I got to music is the path that I'm supposed to do that with. There's no, I believe in God. I believe in destiny. I believe in a path. And I believe that I went through the things that I went through so I could help more people 
than the, the the tiny bit of the the pain that I experience compared to the amount that I want to help people is just there's no comparison to how worth it it would be if I could save one person's life for with anything yeah. especially with my life. if I could just put a smile on one person's face on the way to school who's about to go get bullied and it made them feel like you know some type of, you know some type of uh just some type of hope or you know mm -hmm. gave them some self-esteem like music did me you know uh that's worth it man it's worth yeah. it it, that's the same philosophy I have with the show. If I could just reach that one person and give them another day of hope to to know I mean, that life can go on. You giving me a platform to talk about the stuff that I want to today. That means the world to me. You, you don't even understand. Like, I don't take this lightly at all. This means a lot. Like, like being able this is this right here is this is I'm living it right now. That's the way I look at it, man. This is this is what I do. You know, uh, I I want to talk about I want to tell my story and help people. I want to be a part of this world, you know, in this community. And um, and I want to be a positive light in it, not somebody trying to shed light on bad things, you know. And um, I feel like to do that, I need to be able to talk and to talk. I need to have people willing to listen to me, you know, and if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to do that. So you. what you do is super special, man. Thank you. It's already helped people. It just helped me. It's already helped me. It's helped me right now, this second. <laughs> That's uh, I, I, that means a lot to me. You know, people like us who have been damaged a lot, we have this empathy for other people, sympathy for other people. That we just want others to not feel that pain anymore. We want to help them. So that that's been my main goal this this whole time. You know, it it's awesome getting to meet so many great people. I, I mean, I've met some really famous people, and you know, the, to hear some of their stories that they're they're going to hopefully inspire someone else. You know, it's it's great getting to know them, but when you get down to the root of why am I the way I am, that that to me means more than, oh man, what 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 what'd you feel when you wrote this song and what kind of guitar did you use? And dude, I can look up some of these artists, pull up their interviews, and they almost all sound carbon copy. I hate it, man. <laughs> I know what you mean. I get sick watching this stuff, man, because I don't really watch TV that much. I watch interviews from artists. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with music, you know. Like that's, it's like, like, and it's, I, I, I know what you're talking about. It is like that, man. And it's a, uh, it's like you said. You talk about why they are the way they are. You can understand their music more too, man. Like you understand them as artists, because artists, you know, we're all self-expressing, you know, unless, you know, unless for some people. I, you know uh when i was in high school there were certain bands that i just didn't listen to i didn't care for one of them was poison and i i went to a poison concert um as an adult my my little brother had gotten tickets it was a hair metal fest it was gonna be a day of all these bands from the 80s right oh lord yeah it was <laughs> It was, a, it was I mean, a blast. A lot of them I love. Like, I don't know if you consider them hair metal, but Queensryche, man, oh, that yeah. band. Oh, yeah. Dude, That's my wife's favorite. Dude, I love them, man. They're just the sickest bands from the, I don't know, for the 80s or 90s. I think they were dude, 80s. Did it came out in the 80s? Yeah. They were like, they were, they were different than every other hair metal band. They came with an attitude. They weren't like, mm -hmm. like, man. I don't know. I, I could go on about with hours about Jeff Tate's vocals and just all those guys, man. It's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, definitely one of my top bands. But well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean no. to interject. Oh, no, 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 no. This this is actually your time, and I'm taking it up with my stories. But the, my my point hey, man, is, I, is, I got all the time in the world. I'll sit here for <laughs> six hours and talk. <laughs> but uh, 
I I, uh, I went to the concert because uh, my brother had gotten better tickets and he gave me his uh, old set for free. So I'm like, oh, well, hell, you got all these other cool bands out there. I, I like, you know, Slaughter was out there and I forgot who else. But... Okay. So I'm there and that was the year that my brother decided to end his life. And so my first wife and I decided that every time they were going to have a hair metal fest, we were going to be there just kind of to honor him. Well, yeah, for sure. By, uh, by happenstance, we got to go backstage and Ricky rocket was there, the drummer. And yeah. So I decided oh, I'm gonna go up and talk to him. And I told him the story about my little brother and how we started coming. And anyway, he came up and he gave me the biggest hug. And he was just so inspiring talking to him. And then all of a sudden, I was like, you know, Poison's not so bad after all. So I start, made me want to listen to him. And I think if you can relate to a band, that makes you a bigger fan. So. Yeah, it's not even just about the music itself that you hear. It's about the the culture. It goes back to the culture and the idea of the music, you know, that attracts you to it. It's not just about the sound. It's about these people. I, I can relate, man. These interviews, I see interviews of musicians and, and like I like them as people before I even listen to their music because I'm just like scrolling through. I hear their name, so I'll click on their video. I'm like, what's this dude about, you know? And um, you know how you do. And, you know, I'm just like, wow, like this dude's cool. I want to listen to his music. And then I think that if I would have heard the music before I knew about him, I probably wouldn't like it as much. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you get to get into these people's worlds, you know? Oh, uh, Billy had sent me this kid named, it's funny, his first name's Cameron. Um, Cameron Sean, and he's like a hip hop rap artist. And, you know, I, I am not a fan of that music, but I sat down and I talked to him. And I found out what he was all about and his love for his family, that he was trying to, to make it so he could support his family and make a better life for them. Yeah. And I was like, you know, maybe this is not too bad after all. So if there's going to be any rap music I was going to listen to, it was going to be him. And that's because and I got to know him. Yeah, that that's one thing about Wu-Tang Clan. They've always been very open. I'll, I'm sorry I go back to them, but they're just oh, a no, huge influence ahead. music in my life. And, and there's 10 of them, so there's a lot to do with that. Really, there's like 20 of them. <laughs> there's, <laughs> I mean, when they say they were a clan, they weren't lying. When they say they were forever, they're, I mean, they're 54 years old, still touring the world, man. They got a TV show, uh, Wu-Tang American Saga. I would recommend you, it's Hulu. I would recommend you watch that since you're really into the culture of music. Um, and it will give you some insight on the hip hop world because so those guys, man, they they came together and they they did they didn't they 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 they're RZA they're the Abbott not their leader because they're all leaders, man. But the one who put it all together, he made them sign contracts saying they would stop selling drugs and everything. You know, he really he made them. Uh, they did that to get their families out of poverty. They they really did, and most rappers do. You know, um, real them really special case that they they were a lot of them were enemies, rival gangs, rival neighborhoods, whatever you know, and they um they came together for a common goal to get their families out of because they knew they had something special. You know, their their mindset, not even just their music, but their mindsets, who they were as people. You know, they were all genuinely really good people, and they do a lot. I mean, the old dirty bastard, God rest his soul, rest in peace, man. He um he uh his son actually his super inspiring story his son young dirty bastard is now his you know filled his shoes in the wu-tang clan he's around my age super inspiring story super wow. inspiring to see that live as somebody who's in the beginning stages of recording an album you know and seeing that man but you know people want to say all this stuff and when they said wu-tang for the was for the children they weren't lying man odb this man he he lifted you know how those mothers, like like a car will be trapped on top of the kid and they'll get super strength. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what he, he did. He lifted a car off of a child. Like, you know, no. like, like put himself in harm's way to do it. 
Yeah. Wow. Saved a kid's life, man. It was all over the news. You can look it up. It's all over YouTube. You know, it's one of the big achievements. You know, they, they they're the, a lot of these rap artists are actually really good people, man. Really good people. You know, sadly, ODB, you know, he was one of those people. He 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 liked drugs and women, you know, and that was his downfall, you know, and it's sad because people look at these celebrities like they're just material, but they're human beings, you know, with feelings and lives, you know, and um. You know, we we lose a lot of them to drugs. You know, th another world one I would recommend to check out is Juice World. I saw him in Colorado a few years ago before I came back, and uh, he uh very big inspiration. He uh he would make music that you would probably like. He was a hip hop artist, but he was he man. I mean, he 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 went like however many times platinum you can go <laughs> or dim diamond. I'm sorry, like <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, overdose. You know, Lil Peep, same, was about to blow up. He was about to, he fused rock and rap and was really about to do it on a whole nother. He was about to be the biggest artist in the world. Died for an overdose, you know. Instead of having his life, he has a Netflix documentary. You know, it's sad. It's sad, man. So much talent and you just waste it on things like drugs. And people don't they only think about it oh wow this makes me feel good and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get out of control and before you know it i mean i'll sit and finish an eight ball by myself yeah. in one night and how i'm still here i mean i must be here for a reason yeah I, um uh a conversation with billy is really what made me stop drinking i'm um, uh almost seven months clean on alcohol and uh Congrats. i contribute that to a conversation with billy i uh i talked to him for about an hour maybe a little bit more and uh he i don't know man there's no amount of money that the, my family my prestigious side of the family could convince me to you know and they don't want to i'm just saying you know i could have followed that path and it just never appealed to me. But Billy, he told me some things, man, and really put things into perspective. Because this is a man I look up to that is just, he, he's just achieved greatness in life in my eyes. You know, he's worked with some of the best. And I couldn't, that's, what, that's all I've ever dreamed of. And he put some things in perspective. And it made me realize I have to now, like, before I pull out of this parking lot of this store, I got to make a choice, you know, and uh, what I'm going to do with my life right now you know and uh yeah I, I don't think he knows that that conversation had such an impact on my life and what i'm doing right now um because i was like on the verge of falling apart mm. and you know uh, he definitely he, uh shout out to billy man he's, yeah. he's helping me achieve billy, what i want to achieve in life billy is one of a kind uh, you know his his kindness and friendship, gosh, I, I can't say how much that means to me. And all because we both have a love for Frank Zappa. Yeah, I, I say I saw him on that documentary. I saw he wrote a book about the mothers of invention, and I, I googled his name and I I found his email and I sent him a message and it's like, hey, can you be on my show? And I, he he says, look, I don't have the equipment right now he says but i i do represent a bunch of musical artists if you'd um interview them and be honest with you i thought it was just going to be some maybe up and coming nobody's ever heard of kind of people and you know first interview i think was uh kevin godley who was the drummer from 10 cc and part of godly yeah. and cream and i'm going they're like on my my uh my playlist if i ever go you know on a long trip i'm playing 10 cc or uh, you, know. I, uh, <laughs> you put my press release out so you know being the excited little kid inside me just starting out doing this stuff you know and i went and looked on his website and just i was like I wonder if he has my name up there man and i looked man and it's just not that it means anything because it's in alphabetical order and stuff, but it's just, it makes you, if it wasn't for Billy, man, man, on his website, my name is like right above Richie Blackmore's in the That's list. That's crazy, like, isn't it? 
Richie Blackmore. <laughs> Like, I never in my life thought that, like, me as a guitar player, just the fact that anywhere in this world my name is near him, <laughs> like, I was like, what? And it's like Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, and it's like, dude, that's like Dio, man. <laughs> like, I know, dude, he's he's trying to get uh, Neil Smith, who was the drummer for Alice Cooper. And... Yeah, he was on my dad's album. Yeah, that's crazy. He's yeah, trying to get him on yeah. my show. And <laughs> Carmen Apice. Uh, That's know. crazy. I mean, the dude yeah, played with Vanilla Fudge, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> I mean, look, go on his website, look on his list of clients, man. You got oh. Rush up there. You have Johnny Cash up there. I mean, Billy, he, he's a humble man because he's he, he doesn't it, – it seems like he doesn't do too much for the press. He could he could be Hollywood, I would say. You know, he's Billy down keeps to earth. humble. Yeah, he's very mm-hmm. down to earth. He's not Hollywood at all, and I love that about him, man. Because I mean, what he's genius. what he's done for me, I I don't know how I could ever repay him. And, and the dude sends me uh, books that he wrote, and then he had another book. And he said we were talking about some of my my health issues, and he says, "Oh man, I, I use I read this book and it helped me." And he freaking sent me a copy, you know great guy man he great would do guy. anything for anybody well, you know if it wasn't for a billy my dad wouldn't have made that record billy wasn't on my record on just on that record he was he was my dad's closest friend wow. for sure i've met a lot of my dad's friends billy is most genuine out of all of them that i've ever met you know and he he, he made that happen for my dad really you know that it was a team effort but i mean he 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 looked at my dad and believed in him, you know, and look what they achieved. It my dad didn't give it enough time to uh uh you know, he didn't live long and he, he he killed himself a month after it was released. Why you would do that after working with some of the most legendary artists? The only thing could be the drugs, you know. Um just mental illness, which is can be man he could have managed anybody can usually manage it if it, as long as they're not adding to it, you know. Mm-hmm. But but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have I wouldn't be able to sit here and say I have a little legacy, you know, to to live out if it wasn't for Billy. I wouldn't be able to achieve that um, as far as the business is concerned, publicity, advice. Billy, uh, he really opened my eyes on how I carry myself online, my public perception, you know, the things I say, the things I do, how, you know, like what, you know, that I need to carry myself differently in those aspects. He's taught me a lot, man. More than he understands that he's taught me. You know, when I was a little kid, I reached. I I I, I know Billy. I've known Billy a long time, man. <laughs> he uh, and he 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 listened to me when I was just a kid. He believed in me. He's believed in me all these years. You know, still believes in me. Obviously, you know, I mean, he's he's working for me. He's doing a lot for me. Well, I okay. I I could kind of tell the tone that he had when he wrote to me and so uh, i was like well, of course i'll have him on my show you know and thank you i'm really glad that i got to meet you i i, I feel like i've i've added something else to my life to make my life better just meeting you thank you i, I really genuinely appreciate that and same Honestly, man, like it's it's a pleasure, man. It, it's it's such a pleasure to sit down, and talk music, and real life, real stuff. You know, it's uh, it's not every day you meet people that are not only open enough but willing and uh, you know, appreciate good conversation about uh, stuff with substance. You know, subjects with substance. It's um, it's a, it's just it's delightful. I would say. <laughs> well, I want you. To- I want you to make me a promise that when your next album comes back on, I mean, when you put it out, I want you to come back on my show and talk about it. For sure, man. Uh, absolutely. I'll, I'll come on the show anytime, yeah. anytime. Uh, I, uh, man, even if it might take me a little while to do that, man, hopefully I can get some success on this one. <laughs> Ride this out for a little bit. You I, know, uh, I think you will. I think I hope you do. So. I don't know how all this business stuff works as much as I should, you know, but um I'm working on it. You know, I'm doing everything I can. I, I am I uh um 
It's uh, you know, I'm trusting the people in my corner and on my team. You know, definitely listen to Billy. Oh yeah, uh-huh. he's he's my mentor when it comes to all this. I listen to anything he says. I don't care if I don't even like it. He's never told me anything I didn't like, but you know. Yeah, he's he's not gonna BS you either. No, that's what I like about him. You know, if he BSed me, that conversation wouldn't have had an impact that he had with me. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. I definitely am recommending this to my audience, even if you're not into that hip hop and kind of stuff. It's not going to sound like a, a regular hip hop album. I'll, I'll give you that. No. So. Yeah, it just has some influences is all. Yeah. Just a little bit of influence. I mean. It's really rocking. I mean, if you like rocking music, you'll like this hard rock music. And uh, I wish you all the success in the world. You always have an open invitation to be on the show. Um, Thank you. Do you, know, do you. Do you have a website? Yeah, Um, it's going to change. Uh, but for right now, uh, it's going to be up this world. Um, it's midnight daydream dot company dot site. And, uh, you can find merch there. Uh, I'm not yet. Uh, merch is going to come in. I'm getting all that stuff put on, you know, in the next month or so. So I'll have merch up there. There's the record will be out there. Physical copies. Um, I'll have some more stuff. I'm re-releasing a, a midnight daydream. Isn't just going to be a, isn't just my group. It's also going to be a record label. And uh, we're re- reissuing my father's album. Finally oh. worked out getting the rights to that. It took me 23 years, but <laughs> um, I'm going to re- be re- reissuing that and I'll sign in some other bands. So that'll be all on the website. It's midnightdaydream.company.site. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty much everything. Show announce- announcements, anything. You know, all our social media links are up there. So Yeah, what are, what, uh, what all social media are you on? Um, right now, just Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, of course. But um, that's about it right now. I'll probably stick with just that. The album, uh, as far as streaming services, the album will be on Spotify, uh, YouTube, um, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon, the standard, and I'll be floating around Pandora, all that stuff too. You know, all the sort of streaming radio stations. Well, I'm actually going to add the links in the description of this show. So make it easy for people just to click on it and go to it. Oh, thank you. I do appreciate that. I do. Um, you know, and I want to get this out to as many people as possible. I, I don't want this just to be about music. This isn't about me, you know, getting a bag of money. I, I really want to help, you know, um, save the culture of rock music and music in general. I like to say I do it all, you know, and, I really, I really, you know, um, you know, that, that logo, I want that to be the bat symbol for rock music. There you go. <laughs> My general, <laughs> so, you know, we got to stick together and uh, it's time that we start treating what we love and cherish so much. Like it means something again. Yes, I want to, sure. I want to help fuel that. Yeah. Bring people together instead of all this other division that's going on in the world right now. Mm. exactly exactly you know let's all be a family again (laughs) yeah let's be that strong nation that we used to be Mm. you know it man music brings people together you know um even the stuff you would think divides people apart you know it's music and it it can be talking about division but it'll bring people together it's just this weird thing it's just this energy just beautiful beautiful you know if you believe in god you know, God talks about having music in heaven before he even talks about creating the earth. It's just, you know, I view it as a spiritual thing. You know, it's uh, it was created before humans, you know, we didn't create it. It's it's a thing of, of nature itself. Well, it can be that bridge that, that it could be that something we have in common that brings people together. We just, we need to spread the love and not the hate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Riley, again, I thank you for being on the show, man. Uh, thank it means you. a lot. Thank you. Anytime, anytime, 
you know, if you want to talk to me before the next album about, you know, uh, the how how the album went, you know, anything, man, please. Yeah. Just, this is what I do. You know, I I like talking. I like telling my story, talking about my music, and I like talking to good people, you know, having good people in my life. You know, that's that's important. Yeah, that, that is uh, definite. I, it sucks how many relationships I've had with people I grew up with that I, I had to break it off or you know, I, I say I love I love them from afar. If they really needed me, I'd be there for them. But I just can't hang out with them because I'm not oh, yeah. I'm not a teenager anymore. I can't party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just Paul Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank all of you out there. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll come back. Hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys. You make it possible for me to do this, and the word thanks just doesn't seem like enough. So until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace.